And John, thank you for recording this. So more or less, I think the process would go like this, is that we're gonna, this is the first working group meeting. Uh, it's, uh, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, I think what the expectation is, is that we're going to um, see what you think your goals are. Uh, then we'll make a kind of a list of uh, what we expect to do in Q1. Then we're going to review that, get back to you with the recommendations. And at some point in the near future, we're going to have a final list of Q1 goals. And so then Q1 will start. All right. So um, I think the plan here is that just every group would um, take um, about five minutes or so. We have, because we have many groups, we would like to wrap up in one hour uh, and then just explain who is in that group, how you plan to organize and uh, what, your, what you think you can do in Q1. And um, so any questions on that? Okay. If no, let's go ahead and start. Let's start with the deployment group. Um, before, so the again, as we mentioned last time, we were hoping that every group would kind of select a um, representative because obviously you don't want to talk at the same time. So that's where that representative should start talking. All right, let's start with deployment then. Uh, is someone gonna uh, share the slides so that we don't all individually do it? So I'll share the slides. So I'll okay. drive the slides. This is the least I can do. <laughs> One second. Uh, oh yeah, I can share this. Uh, John, can you let me share the screen? John. I don't, I'm not, uh, just, I don't Click have my normal shield. admin settings in here. There is a shield at the lower uh, uh, bar. I don't see my normal stuff. Uh, am I like not logged in as myself maybe? Um, host has disabled screen sharing. Uh, okay, let me log out and log back in. All right, let's do that. I mean, one of the most capable software development teams in the world here cannot figure out how to use goddamn Zoom, but we'll see. That's because Zoom is goddamn bullshit. Yeah. No, it works. It works. It's the worst chat thing out there except for all the others. Exactly. Well, it's not a chat thing. So stay on topic, people. On topic. Yes. Absolutely, Dave. Thank you, Dave. Uh, so I just locked my PSU account. I can't get in to host this meeting. I'm. Uh, Can you share? What was that? Can you share? No, it says host has disabled screen sharing. It doesn't think it's me. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create new meeting. I'm going to put this in the chat right here. And then we're going to all log yes, out. Would you like me to do that? No, I'll do that. It looks like I can. Okay. Oh, you can. It gives me a green button, but it doesn't work. Do you have like administrative privileges, Jen, to enable it, or is it just let you? No, do I, it? Just, I just, I just saw the button. I thought I could try. Oh, if you click it, it'll tell you you're not allowed. I think. If you like, click uh, on, yeah. If you click on participants on the lower right, can you click claim host? 
No. I you need the host key to the do host. That. Yeah. No, there's no host for the meeting. Oh, okay. and there's no password set. Yeah. I mean, there seems to be. Oh, yeah. I can enter a host key, but where would I find that one? Okay, one second. So let's just, uh, let's just all right. Maybe my PSU account expired. So I can create a Zoom and put the link in Slack. I, that would probably work. Well, not everybody on this call has access to our Slack. So Good just, point. So just hold on, hold on for one second. We should tweet it out too. I can also stick around here for 10 minutes and catch the latecomers. And of I course, feel like if you if you tweet the link directly, you're asking for Zoom bombers. No, don't do that. I wouldn't do that. Um, oh, wait, wait. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. One second. Let me leave nice. and come right back in. I'm glad all this is being recorded. That's, that's a drama. Just that section uh, uh, is good for... Uh, <laughs> so, John. Hey, I see everything. Wonderful. There you go. So you're Thank gonna. You. Put it's it's now. Sorry, sorry, everyone. Whew. I'm glad that didn't happen in the yesterday's webinar. I think everyone can share now, so. Yeah, do you want to share, Anton? All right, let's do it. OK, deployment working group. OK, I think I was uh, volunteered to lead this one. So uh, this is the, the deployment working group. The, the purpose of this group is basically not to develop Galaxy itself, but to develop the solutions of how Galaxy is installed, uh, deployed, managed, run, that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, uh, and, and uh, we recognize that there are different ways that Galaxy uh, will be installed and run. Um, everybody's site is different. Everybody's technologies technology preferences and so awesome. forth are different. And so uh, we want to, to uh, support those, but also um, unify the efforts of uh, the, the cloud and GBL teams, um, which have, have mostly been uh, working on Kubernetes and Helm-based deployments and uh, the, the more traditional group, which has been doing uh, Ansible-based deployments. Um, since there's a lot of duplicated effort, uh, we want to try and continue to support uh, these things, but also um, uh, not, not um, develop in, in sort of parallel without uh, crossing over. Okay, so um, I think I covered all this. Uh, but here's a group members, um, so from a number of different uh, labs. And I'll go ahead and go to the next slide. Our priorities for the, for the first quarter next year um, is uh, a consistent and sort of production ready deployment of ITs in the various um, uh, ways that we deploy Galaxy currently. So especially for uh, Anvil and for uh, public Galaxy servers. Um, we uh, want to make use of and uh, figure out all the, the bugs and, and pain points with uh, getting Pulsar to directly interact with object store backends. So yeah, if the, we don't have to go over this image, but essentially it means that currently for Pulsar to stage data uh, for, for executing jobs, it has to go through uh, Galaxy to do that. And it would be much more efficient if you have an object storage system um, behind Galaxy, so iRods or S3 or Swift or Ceph or whatever you, you are using. Um, it would be more efficient if Pulsar could communicate directly with that object store. And so that'll be one of the things we'll, we'll work on for, for first quarter. And then uh, a third, third piece will be to finish up the uh, 
work to make it possible to pip install Galaxy, which should ease deployment quite a bit. So uh, the the ITs that's fairly well defined. <laughs> the pulsar direct interaction and backend object store that sounds like a lot for Q1. No, it it uh, it in theory works, uh, right? So so um, John did a whole bunch of work to make to to make this possible, but I I don't think it's anyone has done it outside of John you know, working in his development environment. I just really want to emphasize it. I mean, I, I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm just, I just really want to emphasize that we want to define things that we can do. Because not only this would benefit Galaxy, it would also benefit this team once we actually see that we set the goal, we do it, we move forward. So it's just, just please um, think about actual thing because is that achievable? I'm not saying it's not, I, it, but just take that point seriously for, for well, all working groups. Yeah, for like point two there, it'd be interesting, like what is the deliverable or what is, how are we saying that it, because I think it does do that, right? So what does it, is it a piece of documentation? Is it uh, working on main? Is it a default yeah. option in the cloud product with test cases or? Okay, yeah, that, no, that's good. We should define it. I mean, I'll, I'll, we'll have to talk as a group, but personally, I'd be satisfied with uh, someone other than you getting this set up and working in an environment other than just a pure development environment um, and being able to explain to someone else how to set it up. Okay. I'm also not, okay, we might do this for high glass. I don't know. Jupiter, it's a very well defined goal. We need to do this. Okay, so again, the, the idea is that we're gonna talk about this. I, I will then make a compiled list of the goals for all working groups. Then we're gonna have PI meeting. And I think what will come out of this PI meeting will be that we would just like, for example, in case like the second goal here is that what's the, as John said, what the actual sort of deliverables here, what's the breakdown? I mean, what, what concrete things. So any questions to that working group from anybody? Specifically from PIs. Okay. So, so I, I guess you're concerned about the you know, the two, I guess I'm concerned about what's needed for actually pip install Galaxy, right? So how close are we to that? Uh, so I have to come back to that. I think it should be easier now that so much work has been done on the packages. Um, there are just a few cases now where we're reading from config files instead of defaults in the modules. And that was the main thing holding it back, right? You had to, you have to start Galaxy from the root of the Galaxy clone, which doesn't exist in a pip install Galaxy. So. My, my estimation is we're like 95% of the way there and it would take someone maybe a week, uh, two weeks, I guess, I'm, I'm bad at estimates, two <laughs> weeks to, to get it um, working. I mean, I had it working in the past, right? It did yeah, work. Well, I remember, point, yeah, you had so. it. Like, yeah, that's what I mean. But, <laughs> but yeah. a lot of stuff has been added since then. So um, there is stuff, uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, that, that'll be a really awesome thing if that actually works, so yeah. <laughs> and, yep. and just for everybody else, another point of this meeting is that so all working groups know what the other, because we cannot achieve anything if you guys, if working groups don't talk to each other. Are there, are there any plans to deprecate any of the install options as this one becomes online? From the webinar Tuesday, you know, we just, there's a lot of options, which just brings a lot of maintenance overhead. I think uh, certainly, I think long term, I wouldn't want to do like the the run.sh and run you know method that we currently use. Like everything should be, we should provide some kind of of a pre-packaged way of installing Galaxy and and running it simply. So with like a pip install Galaxy, you know, it should just be pip install Galaxy and then run some command called Galaxy and it starts up and you have a fully functioning Galaxy server. So the goal, the goal here then would be then to deprecate the clone and run? The clone and run would still be useful for development, but we don't need to make it easy at that point. It, you know. Okay, fair point. Yeah. 
So I have a general question about working groups before we get into too many of them. Um, if people are interested in joining a working group, um, we might want to have the uh, speakers mention how to do that or who to contact. Uh, so I think you can you can contact the working group. But so we had this artificial requirement of not having more than uh, for for a person not being more than in two groups. That's probably not going to work. So it's not really set in stone. But what we want to prevent is that a person being in all working groups because then you know what's the point. Okay, well, thank you, Nate. So the next is- um, Just to that, just one more maybe question. It'd be nice if, uh, if the working groups are gonna have regular meetings to post that uh, time on the slides um, so that if somebody is interested or wants an opportunity, there's sort of that as a standing uh, open door. And in addition, most of the groups already have Gator channels, but all groups should have uh, that. Can we add a section to the events or a new calendar for these things too? Yeah, we can. Um, I've also created a working groups page where I'll put a bunch of summary information pointing off to wherever stuff is. Great. Awesome. So one of the things that we're going to do after this meeting is that we're going to follow up and you will have to tell Dave what your meeting times are so we have this on the Galaxy calendar. I think in the working groups that I am, we've decided against meeting because it's across multiple time zones and it's just easier and faster to do everything on chat. Async first, yeah. Okay. I can confirm that for the uh, tools working group. But that means it's even easier for people to just show up and read the history on Gitter or whatever. In this case, it should be very clear what that Gitter channel is. So Dave, we're going to have to create a page where all of that is aggregated. All right. Admin group, formerly known as usegalaxy.star. I don't think we appointed a, a leader for this. Um, if someone else wants to to do that, that's fine. Otherwise, I'll continue on. Um, so, right, we, we had a discussion and uh, it seems like uh, usegalaxy.star is sort of a sub-project of admin uh, in general, especially because uh, there are a lot of plans that we have for usegalaxy.star that once we implement most of them, there won't be a whole lot more to do with it. Um, of course, we can always come up with new stuff, but it seemed like uh, usegalaxy.star is, is a more useful concept as like a project of the admin working group. Um, so right, the, the, the goal here is to develop solutions for large scale production galaxy instances, um, and then figure out what it means to be a use galaxy. We've already done this to some extent, but, but really formalize the process of, uh, of the usegalaxy.star. Uh, server experience. So, I think I don't think Nate for you it's a good idea to be head for both groups. You're gonna go. I mean, you're already crazy. You're gonna get just crazier. So, uh, so it should be. It should not be. We should definitely prevent one person being the responsible guy for 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 two groups. So, okay, we'll we'll, uh, we'll discuss it internally then, and someone can uh, someone else can be in charge of this. Next slide. Yep. So, so priorities for the uh, for the first quarter. There's probably a lot here, but there also are a, are a lot of people I think who are fairly motivated to work on some stuff. Uh, there are some issues, especially uh, that EU has experienced with Pulsar, um, that we want to get resolved within the first, uh, you know, pretty pretty quickly here, um, and then. Uh, deploying the common tool set to, to CVMFS and actually getting our servers uh, using those. Um, all the tooling is in place and we should be able to do this, especially if we cut out Conda, uh, which is the plan. And um, so, so uh, we, can, we can move forward with that. Um, unifying the, the look and feel of the servers, um, determining the, the suitability of using RefGenie and maybe getting started on that process of, of an automated community-driven uh, way to, to get reference data in the galaxy and figuring out the conflicts with our existing reference data. Uh, 
uh, as I said, defining what a use galaxy.star server is and formalizing that process. Um, automating GTN tests, that's currently already happening on U and, and uh, AU, but not for the US server. And then um, the, uh, the testing tools that are deployed, automatically updating tools that are deployed, um, and then regular meetings, although this is possibly the most difficult group to do it with because um, we're, we're spread out everywhere. Yeah, that sounds much more, much more than just Q1, but again, we'll, we'll, we'll refine that. So. A lot of it, so a lot of this stuff is done for like one or two sites, right? So um, there, some of these are relatively small tasks to do. Okay. Any questions? So, I mean, so with the Pulsar, is that just the issues that EU is experiencing or because Pulsar is a very large thing, right? I guess right, right. Not so, so, so we've discussed the idea that Pulsar maybe needs uh, a more full-time or, you know, dedicated maintainer. Um, there are a bunch of us who work on it in little bits uh, that uh, as, as we find problems and need things, um, but it, it might, you know, it's a, it's a, sort of critical piece of our infrastructure at this point for all these sites um, and maybe should have a little more attention on it. Um, and, and, you know, I have a few uh, wish list things as well that need to get done with it, so. And the back end working group has Pulsar development tasks also. It would be amazing to have a full-time Pulsar developer. Awesome. Okay, and for those of you who are on this call who are not usually part of these meetings, also please, everybody's equal here. So if you want to participate in any groups, you want to take some piece, please go ahead. Okay, I is that Nate? You too? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, this. this yeah, so, so we discussed this maybe as a project also of the admin group, but more ongoing um, because there will always, always be new challenges with Maine, um, but uh, we may keep it as a separate group as well. I'm not sure. It, we do need a place to sort of uh, keep track of the priorities for Maine. Um, even if the, the folks in this group don't end up doing a significant amount of the development, it is something that probably should inform a lot of uh, other groups and, and the work that gets done. So uh, priorities for the, for the main working group, uh, this is usegalaxy.org for, for anyone who isn't familiar with the nomenclature. Um, it, uh, so uh, interactive tools for course number one, uh, developing a storage policy. So right now we just keep everybody's stuff live on hot storage forever, um, which is not sustainable. Um, so in the first quarter of next year, we want to start storing new uh, data in IRODs. We already have our test instance writing here, and we've been working out all the bugs and performance issues and, and you know, things that come with that. Um, so, so we're pretty far along that path and want to start putting it into production. Uh, get training infrastructure as a service uh, deployed on main and uh, uh, use the data that we've been collecting on tool memory usage and do a better job than allocating memory for tools um, and using the resources that we have, uh, which should help increase the throughput. And then any uh, sort of additional goals. So there is a lot of stuff, and this is why I talked about maybe folding this with admin because reference data is a huge uh, concern for, for main um, and that's an, that's in a priority in the admin group as well. My understanding that uh, you were talking to Bjorn uh, to basically not have that working group and do fold this into admin or somehow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. UI UX. Uh, okay, so this one's pretty self-explanatory. Um, UI UX enhancements primarily to Galaxy first, but in talking to folks, um, it seemed like it might actually be really useful to uh, cross this group up uh, or, or engage with like 
you know, cloud man developments and things like that in the future. So, so to be able to like re-implement a new, new cloud man UI, that, that sort of thing. Um, anyway, so there's the members, um, scope might grow, uh, to more generic UI UX stuff. Um, so the first, the two things that were suggested as priorities, we actually hope to have finished Q4. So before Q1, um, that's a history PR and IGV.js, um, the history PR and uh, is pretty much ready to go. Um, hopefully we can just merge that. And then I, I do anticipate that a, a significant portion of Q1 will be sort of iterating on little refinements there and, and you know, kind of tweaking things and, and uh, catching it up with changes that happened since it was first branched. <laughs> um, uh, and IGV.js will be a, a, a nice uh, kind of prototype new visualization. Um, so for Q1, uh, we want to focus on tool form beautification probably is the largest single project. Um, we're going to do it bottom up. Uh, each of the components on the forms, which are used in more than just the tool form, uh, those can be individual components that are used elsewhere in the application. So we can, we can sort of componentize and, and parallelize development here um, and hopefully have a completely view-based tool form uh, by the end of this, eliminating a whole bunch of old backbone code. Um, batch operations are another, uh, highly requested feature. So that's kind of like in, in, in Gmail, right. When you want to uh, delete a whole bunch of emails and you've got a hundred thousand emails, you can say like match all emails, uh, uh, with this search criteria. That's kind of what we want to be able to do in the, in the new history with, uh, changing data types or, or re you know, like naming, adding tags, things like that. Um, so that's a Q1 task. And then the next two are a little bit more flexible. There are uh, projects scoped out with like little subcomponents, but general library and collection UX, um, there is a whole project board for collection UX that has a whole bunch of issues. We'll refine exactly which ones are gonna be finished in Q1 and which ones are uh, stretch goals or whatever um, over the next week or two. Um, but same thing with libraries, um, Oleg already jumped on uh, a big part of the libraries thing and, and massively improved the, the recent changes to that. Um, and then the last new feature is the new user welcome, new user welcome, uh, which is something that first time users will see. Um, and it'll just, it, we've had the issue open for a couple of years now, but it'll, it'll be a nice intro to galaxy showing what's where linking to resources and things like that. Um, that's meant to be, tailored to new users. Uh, and then you can always revisit it later, but um, kind of an intro to Galaxy tutorial built into the application itself. Um, so given the previous history of history PR, uh, do you really think this is going yes. to be just part of Q1? Uh, it seems to me like it's the whole Q1. So it'll be merged in the next couple of weeks. And then um, of course the real couple. Yes, and then, so the way it's gonna be merged and it'll be an opt-in feature where Initially, nothing changes for users, but if you click in the little panel, you can say, oh, yeah, I want to use the new history and you can see all of the, the new features. And, and I, I think that's what we really need to more fully flesh out what else needs to be done too, right. uh, and to figure out what we need to refine. Um, but like getting it merged will happen Q4 and then we'll, we'll probably spend the next quarter, you know, I would really encourage you to maybe stick to these two history PR and IGV, and that's well, we'll discuss this more because you know exactly what technical implications here. I, I don't, yeah, but uh, but it's just really, I know you're a superman, then, but it's nine of us, not yes, I know, <laughs> okay. nine superman, but uh, and uh, uh superhumans, uh, but I, I will really want to experiment with this idea that we sort of get something which almost looks like not enough work and then but really doing it well yeah so the tool form was the big it's it's it's, it's i struggled a little bit with balancing work that's exists but is almost done so another thing that I, I i could have sworn i put on this list but fell off the bottom it's on my other sheet here um is the ui for workflow indications marius already has most of that done and i would love for that that that's one of it's actually on our on my other yeah, document. I mean, it just depends on the history PR because I'm using the same components. Yes. So a lot of this is kind of tightly integrated and we'll have to see how well it works uh, once it's all integrated, but. 
Any other questions? I don't want to dominate this conversation because from all this crew, I'm the least technically capable. So uh, any other questions? To I, I have a, just a, I guess a UI UX impacts everything and everybody, uh, predominantly the users. Uh, and so, I mean, this list does include uh, Marius, Nick, and uh, Sam, who are users of Galaxy or, or you know, the main, um, uh, the main experts. So, but I still feel like uh, there's just a lot of times, um, you know, things get done that, that um, are very sort of opinion based. Um, so I, like just, how can, uh, you know, input be provided to the UX group um, from, or how does the, U, the UX group both, how can input individuals provide input and be um, listening to more sort of, or observing more user behavior uh, to match the actual use cases. Especially, you know, there's two libraries in collections UX. So those are all like user driven uh, things. So maybe some kind of study, I don't know. what Those, yeah, I mean, so those, those two are already collections of feedback that are uh, a whole bunch of issues or things like that all tied together. And, and they're all linked up in, in the relevant issues there. Um, it's a good, yeah. I mean, I'd love to do more proactive user ethnography, right? Sitting down and watching someone do do something. Um, I, at least my hunch was for this first term, we have so more than enough to to more than enough on the plate right this second to. Uh, I, 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 yeah, but you know, once something is laid down, like it stays there for at least a year before it's revamped again. I guess in terms of the the layout and whatnot. So um, so that that's one, but but like maybe having a tighter relationship with the training um, group so that as trainings are delivered, people observe and there's feedback uh, provided back, especially for first time users. Uh, I don't know, just-, just No, that's a great idea. That, that's, that's something we talked about pre-COVID. It's a little bit harder to do right now um, yeah. to sit behind someone and watch them do anything, but, um, but yeah. I mean, this is supposed a, uh, to be how these these groups work, right? Is that is that the trading group is supposed to be able to say, okay, well, this is these are the problems, and now who who do I tell, and how do I get priority for fixing these UI problems that we you know found during training? Oh, I can talk to the UI UX group. Right? Yeah. So that should actually be approved under all of this. And I think feedback, such feedback from training groups, should get these these items that they identify should go on the top of that list because yes. that's real trenches i'd also love to add that the support team well which was me to start with which is now expanded and we'll go through it later provide a lot of this information and so um well, and i think we have a pretty good pathway of doing that already but we can discuss yeah i was just going to note that i think the batch operation stuff came from you yeah. or yeah I think so. Well, I, I start. Yeah. It's obvious for everyone. Yeah. So I'm but very excited in, to see in, that. In this case, training or support group, they need to distill this to the point or we need this button here. These are not should be general statements like, you know, interface sucks. It should be just, you need to do this here. So then it will, uh, it's easier to deal with it. Well, well Dan there, can show you some of the things that write up. They're pretty detailed. <laughs> There is no. eye tracking software, so you don't, uh, to do an ethnography, you don't really sit next to a person who is using a system, you just have eye tracking software installed on the user's computer, so it, it just needs to be a, a, a well designed uh, systematic study of how Galaxy is used, probably a lot of work, but it can be done. I believe uh, Freiburg actually did such a study a few years ago. I don't know if these results are still relevant, uh, but maybe Bjorn can uh, resurrect this because Freiburg is a much more collaborative place. So, so they're actually, they're interacting with people from, uh, what is it, human computer interaction group? So I don't know if Bjorn wants to could, say. Could we have a, something on a, like, uh, uh, record your first time using Galaxy uh, thing on on Twitter and post your video, um, mm. or send us your video um, and and see what the first five people that or I don't know first however many people uh, choose to take this challenge we have to incentivize it somehow, but um, just see what they do. Um, well, well, as Anton, yeah, go ahead. So as Anton said, so we we have connection to our um, social social science department and they did such analyzes 
we also did some questionnaires. We also um, observed um, Galaxy users first time using it during a workshop and so on. So we have these connections, we have initial material, but in the end, it, I mean, it's a long-term, such things are long-term projects and um, we need to guarantee that things are in the end implemented and so on. Um, if the UX team is interested in that, I'm happy to, to um, deliver the contacts and to resurrect this effort. Um, but I think we should do that with experts. So there are entire fields that only do that. And this is, this is a scientific field. So this is nothing that you can just do. This is a more or less long-term project um, where I think it's worthwhile to, to get um, really experts in it. Um, so the Science Gateways Community Institute in the States uh, offers such service where they will work with you. We did that for Cloud Launch uh, a couple of years ago, where they will work with you for like three months or so, and they'll write up a report and whatnot about uh, for a specific app. Um, uh, so the, the outreach, I mean, the, so, the, so Dave, uh, Bea, uh, we can actually do what Ennis proposed to ask users to submit uh, first use videos where they encounter some bad situations and I can reprint old versions of the Galaxy unfinished genome calendar. I have all of that so we can send this to maybe first 25 people. I can easily do that. Okay. Uh, can you make sure it does not get forgotten? Try. So we'll but just, just stick it on the agenda for the next Tuesday meeting and then mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll print the calendars. I have the files. I would I would still suggest uh, maybe at least consulting uh, the experts uh, who worked with Bjorn because uh, posting this to Twitter or asking new users would give a very uh, skewed sample. Yeah. So the data we get from that might be not as. No, we're gonna do useful. both. We're gonna do both. Absolutely. Okay. Before we move, I have just two quick questions. Um, how is IGVJS implemented? So right now it's implemented as a charts style visualization where um, we, we were hoping to, use, well, eventually I want it to be the prototype for our sort of a next generation visualization that doesn't rely on the charts framework um, that is view CLI based. So you'll just say like view start galaxy bits or whatever, and it, scaffolds it out and you have your, you know, that's the, that's the goal, not Q1 probably. But uh, anyway, uh, as a first pass, I implemented it as a charts visualization that uses the existing framework to, you know, pick data sets and add tracks and things like that. Okay, cool. Thanks. And new user welcome. Does that include any notion of activities at this point? No. Okay. I don't know where activities fits in here, but it, it seems pretty important to me still that we can try to simplify as we speak about the user experience of Galaxy, simplify what happens when users first hit the page and how quickly they can move to an analysis. Yes. And I wonder if a new user welcome could somehow be our gateway to doing something better with activities. That's a great idea. So we imagine that the new user welcome would grow into a, so, it's a new user welcome and then eventually a an existing user dashboard kind of thing um, that, yeah, you could imagine would grow in that direction. Hey, how, okay. how, close, how close are we to having the new user page, the welcome page actually be integrated into view? I mean, I understand it's still living in an iframe and I know that you've been working on the housing for the application in view form. How close are we to actually getting rid of that, that damned iframe? Well, so we'll want to keep the iframe around for displaying particular types of things. Um, but uh, actually, I just talked to Alex about this yesterday for the for the pointers to just show a regular component there. Um, Switching everything over to view today. Yeah. Wonderful. So, right now. <laughs> like literally right now. Yeah, I discussed that with him last week. I didn't know whether you wanted to go ahead and do that now or if you wanted to perpetuate the iframe catastrophe. We'll still have an iframe for other stuff, but it's the the way that panel works, right? It it dynamically switches between iframe and and a div, so mm -hmm. it's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Hello. Um, so this is the group that used to be known as IPCR, but has been more broadly uh, labeled cancer informatics. And roughly the idea is that large data all over the place needs heavy compute. And so this is a bit of a crisis, particularly for uh, the way historically Galaxy has operated with data in some ways. And so we seek to make that easier in a variety of fashions. Um, there are the members listed and on the updated slides, there are, there's the meeting time on this slide as well. Um, that would be Mondays, 1 p.m. Pacific time and you know, for Eastern time. And as an American, I don't know that Europe exists, so I didn't do the calculations. Sorry about that. Um, next slide, slide please. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so the main three legs of this uh, are that we have various forms of protection schemes that need to be navigated. And I mean, I think everyone's had the experience of logging into 12 different systems in order to do an analysis. So anything that we can do to streamline that for users would be good. Um, we're looking at approaches similar to an Anvil situation where you would have one major login site and then smaller login sites that you may or may not refresh. But ultimately we want the system to work on your behalf to get um, out of your way as much as possible. Um, we data local compute is important in that, um, I mean, data local compute is, maybe people think of that as like, it's on my hard drive with my CPU, but in this sense, we mean it as a co-cloud local in order to use the, uh, higher throughput uh, or bandwidth rather that uh, cloud transfers permit. So doing the analysis where the data lives as opposed to bringing the data to some uh, monolithic hub of uh, processing. Um, and then there's the idea that there are common tools, common workflows, common flows of analysis that we can help people bootstrap their uh, activities with by providing them with these tools and workflows prepackaged or easily accessible. Um, next slide, please. So to turn that into concrete priorities, um, we want to have GVL as the central actor here since it already comes with uh, a variety of tools that will help us with things like authentication or uh, deploying jobs to specific locations and scalability that Kubernetes enables, so on and so forth. Um, so we want to have a GVL up and running on AWS that's configured against offense so that we can access uh, CRDC data. Fence being a uh, service from Gen 3 that serves as a, a gate uh, as fence for authorization and authentication um, against resources that we want. And we want to have the cyclic IF workflows as a first sort of a pilot workflow ready to go and analyze. Um, and these are our Q1 goals. Questions, comments? I wanna assure our European members that Europe does exist. I'll take your word for it. Yeah. Uh, um, where are you going to develop the workflows? Like, where are they going to end up? Is that something we can put on DocStore or the Intergalactic Workflow Commission? Yeah, that's a good question that we are still um, working on. I think we just arrived at it would be a good idea to have a repository of these. And I guess naively, it would be like something bundled with the instance, but that's only useful for a few canonical ones. And as these uh, wealth of workflows come into play, something like what you're describing would be much more useful, particularly if it takes us out of the equation so that user A can make workflow, user B can use, and we can just sit in the background and give a thumbs up. I think we want them on both DocStore and the IWC. I don't actually understand what it would mean to put a workflow on the IWC at this point, but I would welcome the opportunity to learn about that process because I've been 
thinking more about NF Core, for instance, which is the next flow analogous yeah. process. I mean, They've done a nice <clears throat> job. It's not made it onto the priorities, but it's very close. Uh, an initial pass with testing and publishing works. Um, so I, I think that can still happen in Q4, actually. We would be happy to be guinea pigs for the IWC in this case. We have some really important workflows that would benefit from this robustness that would presumably we would get by going through the IWC process. That's the aspiration for sure. Uh, I've got just a comment, sorry, I'm not in any group, but because you mentioned uh, retrieving data from image resources. So I'm dealing. I'm working on images mainly, and we are now working also, and that's relate probably more to the first element, uh, first working group, sorry. We, we're looking at putting images in, uh, we've already put them in object store in S3. So that would probably yes with the work um, done in the first working group. As soon as it's available, we have quite a lot of example of imaging in a file format that is S3 compatible. So that to, to yes, with this type of workflow, instead of fetching them from a standard resource using the API, you can could directly get them from a, an object store. Are you using Docker images? Or? No, no, do, uh, images, uh, imaging data. Im, sorry, oh. not Docker images, oh, imaging okay. data. Right. So like 5D images that you currently retrieve. So I think that's where mention of Omero, which is where the type of data will live in the public image data resources, basically. Uh, yeah, that's uh, good stuff. We certainly have a lot of working group uh, synergy amongst other groups. So anything that we can borrow would be fantastic. As soon as, they, as well, when the the connection in the first group was connecting the with object store, I think we, we have already imaging data and obviously it's in specific file format, but that could be a, work, a workflow to explore potentially to pass that to the user instead of transferring data via an API or getting a local copy, you get basically a URL and try to, you fetch the, da the <clears throat> those data when you want, the plane when you want them. Uh, yeah, that's, definitely that's also, on demand. Oh, go on. That's, also going, <clears throat> that's also going to be a goal of the uh, backend working group that should follow. Yep. The, this concept, uh, of mounting data, so to speak, onto Galaxy, I think is really important for imaging because the imaging data sets are so large and we do want to minimize the transfer. Um, so, yeah, exactly. so for now, I think we're starting out with Omero and trying to use the really nice bridges that have been built between Omero and Galaxy. But in the long run, if we can connect directly to a bucket or if Omero can point us to bucket locations rather than having to transfer that image yeah. data across, that would be amazing. I just put a link of, of an example of file that has Currently in IDR stroke Omero because it's the same thing, but that has been converting it into that S3 compatible format. And you can actually fetch them right now and fetch the plane you want or the, that you, as soon as it's in ZAR, I don't know if you're familiar with, uh, familiar with that, but. Mm -hmm. uh, Jean-Marie? I'm doing uh, a 404 yes. at that URL, is that expected? Oh, sorry, yeah. Maybe, maybe there might be something, something to do, but that's the type of image I, I can. Uh, so that's the image you will see when you look at it. Uh, one awesome. is if we uh, move to iRod, it also has support for S3 uh, plugin. So it can directly talk to uh, S3, um, you know, and we could get that connection via iRod hmm. if needed. Sorry, I, that's... Um... Yeah, we can follow up on this discussion offline, but I think this is really interesting and there's tremendous growth right now and in interest in image analysis. Um, so let's see if we can circle back around at some point and figure out how we can do this well with Galaxy. Yeah, it's, yeah I said it's early days for us to work on that format, but uh, yeah, it's not only the image data, but also if you, if you have track associated to it or they will be, as part of a publication, they will be as in the bucket. That would be fantastic. 
If there are no more questions than the tools working group. All right, so I am the spokesperson for the tools working group. We don't really have a specified leader, more so that nobody really wanted to talk. Um, so we decided basically that every, every quarter we are going to take a, an area of tools that we, that we identify as lacking in Galaxy. Just we don't have the best ones. We don't have a lot of them and specifically um, dig in on those uh, and try to expand our tool set in that area. So uh, Q1, we're going for vertebrate genome project tool set. Uh, next, we don't have one specifically for Q2, but we'll look into that as it comes. We also need to figure out exactly how we're different uh, and how we relate to the IUC, because that was a little unclear. Uh, but those are our main projects. We also are discussing uh, a, a more robust method of training for, for future tool wrappers. Um, there is, just so you know, uh, I asked somebody to parse existing uh, vertebrate genome project um, workflows. So I have a list of tools. And so just, just get in touch with me uh, on that. That would be great. We have a spreadsheet that is completely empty as of yet. Okay. All right, so that's well-defined Q1. Backend. Okay, so um, yeah, the purpose of the backend working group is to design and implement improvements. Um, obviously, concerning the Galaxy backend, which is sort of a central um, <clears throat> thing. And of course, it also involves uh, interaction with um, other groups and other uh, feature projects. Um, so we've uh, settled on sort of uh, four major uh, areas that we want to work on. Um, that sounds like a lot, but we're also many people in the working group. Um, though, so the first uh, priority, and they're not ordered by uh, importance, uh, is to monitor, modernize the um, Galaxy API. Um, so that involves um, my, so there, there is a board that you can see here with uh, seated with some initial issues. Um, mostly this is about um, adopting a um, asynchronous uh, web framework. So uh, currently we're looking into um, fast API. Um, that would give us uh, a lot of modern tools and that includes uh, open API schemas, uh, validation, uh, using type annotations, so that makes the API much more uh, usable and uh, the documentation is great. Um, there's validation, so it will be harder to um, add invalid um, payloads. Um, sort of related to the history PR and like future iterations of uh, history improvements is a history update uh, subscriptions of a WebSocket. So currently whenever we want to check if something happened in the history, we need to poll the history every two seconds, I think, um, currently. Uh, that causes a lot of stress and instead we can just um, asynchronously listen for new things and then send that back out. <clears throat> um, something else that has been limiting what you can do with Galaxy is the fact that we don't have a way to do uh, background tasks, things that run for a long time that shouldn't the user shouldn't wait for five minutes until there's timeout. There should just be an indication that this is happening in the background and you can go on about what you're doing currently. Um, as part of this transition, we would need to replace uh, Uwiski. Um, and somewhat relatedly, uh, we're going to migrate to, uh, we'll need to migrate to uh, SQL Alchemy uh, first 1.4 and then enable the 2.0 features, um, which um, brings some level of compatibility with uh, asynchronous Python. Uh, next slide. And this is Q1? Um, that is Q1, it's also already ongoing, yeah. Um, so uh, we've grouped this under uh, data framework, so um, most of it is uh, work on object stores um, so if you have multiple object stores, you may uh, need multiple quarters. Uh, we want to provide 
uh, easy and intuitive access to scratch storage, meaning uh, large storage that um, you cannot count on the data being preserved, but like you can, you can get a terabyte instead of our standard 250, for instance. Um, <clears throat> cold storage, so uh, tape storage, um, that, that's sort of the different kind of um, object stores. Um, a user interface for uh, summarizing the usage of the object stores. And so of course that would be in uh, collaboration with the front end group. Um, related to organizing um, object store usage is uh, these different retention policies so that goes together with scratch storage. Um, there is a longer term project to also enable uh, user object stores or so users bringing in their um, object stores. Um, and then there is a, uh, also another big thing that this would probably span multiple quarters, but that would be completely remote object stores um, where you can just work with references to S3 files and you could still see them in the galaxy history, but uh, there wouldn't be any metadata until the job has been run on the data set so that like Galaxy doesn't need to touch the data. It just gets a little bit of, of um, metadata. Um, and then uh, enhancing uh, the new Galaxy files plugins. Um, so that's already part of the 2009 release, but um, to really take benefit of it, we can, we can use this Galaxy files plugin so that history exports and in the future workflow invocation exports <coughs> can export to these file uh, plugins, meaning that you can put them on, uh, on S3, on FTP, on um, whatever makes sense um, and whatever um, can be exposed as a, as a file plugin, which unfortunately I've forgotten the name of the library we use, PyFile System 2. So if you can write a PyFile System 2 plugin, your files can be exported there. Um, and then the third item is performance um, improvements and testing. So that's uh, together with the testing deployment teams, um, trying to make sure that uh, performance of difficult and large operations is not decreasing, and, um, <coughs> ideally um, increasing with every Galaxy release, uh, enabling like larger scale uh, analysis with, with Galaxy in terms of number of data sets and size and um, overall scenarios. Um, and one more concrete goal for Q1 is um, optimizing the job and data set state change optimization, which takes up a good fraction of the time needed to finish a job. So, yeah. Is that realistic plan for Q1? Um, which one? All of them or? Yes. Uh, so the first one um, is something that can be done incrementally. Um, so uh, the new um, framework can coexist with old routes. We don't need to immediately uh, scratch everything. Um, and the same is true for augmenting uh, the API routes. This doesn't have to be done all at once, but for instance, for some areas where we're actively working on, I think it makes sense to uh, build up those routes uh, new, and especially we, we have to do that anyway for uh, supporting web sockets. Um, and I have, <coughs> I have a proof of principle working as an open PR. Um, Q1 seems reasonable. For the second uh, one, uh, the um, data framework things, I mean, they're, they're, uh, they're more ambitious and they are multi-quarter um, for sure, uh, but there are deliverables we can we can accomplish in the first quarter. Um, yeah, for the for, data, yes, a lot of the object store stuff. There's two big PRs already <laughs> open that give a lot of that functionality, at least the backend portion of it. Um, and then the two of these things are labeled as multi-quarter goals because I, I don't think we can do them. And then enhancing Galaxy file plugins. I mean, hopefully that's that's something we can deliver. Yeah. And, I want to uh, make one comment to tie things together potentially. I know that there are concerns that as we work with remote data, the metadata that Galaxy normally relies on may not be available to us. And so hopefully to potentially ease this problem or at least make ourselves more cognizant of what the problem really is, we could go 
go back to the UI UX group. And as you write that tool view viewification or take on that tool viewification task, make notes about where metadata is pulled in and used in tools in general. And whether you can imagine any potential workarounds if we don't have that metadata in place. I mean, I, I think I can already say that for a lot of these things that would be trivial because we have don't have these inputs available in workflows either because the data sets don't exist yet. Okay, um, that's fantastic to hear. Yeah, the so I mean, it, it's, it's feasible, it won't be as nice, but I think we have the proper workarounds already in place. And I hope I... Yeah. There's also the, um, like some of the privacy um, oriented galaxies um, like Anvil uh, and, and the ITCR R1, uh, where like the metadata and stuff should not even make its way back to Galaxy, like the peak. Um, just something, I guess, to keep in mind because of the, the restrictions, how where data can reside. Yeah. I mean, that is indeed something that we would then also need to discuss with the front end group. I mean, disabling the peak doesn't seem like a big deal, but yeah. There should be other instances. Any other questions to Marius? Yeah, I was gonna suggest there's a, a rather important kind of overarching piece missing of the puzzle of Galaxy. Uh, Galaxy isn't cloud ready. And it looks like a lot of people are trying to push it into the cloud, but there's several architectural problems with it that need to be addressed before it can actually be put into a cloud environment. Um, I don't know if that's higher priority than some of these other ones. Uh, I mean, for, so for example, um, the only, so you have the uh, application process and then the job handler processes uh, and arguably the workflow scheduler processes. Uh, none of them can be horizontally scaled uh, or recover from a failure without uh, being thrown, throwing the entirety of Galaxy into a undefined state. So for example is the application process, if it's deleting data sets and one of the nodes is suddenly shut down, uh, that delete operation will just simply vanish. Uh, the delete operation needs to be handled the same way as the upload operation where it's scheduled as a job. Uh, the workflow handlers have an issue where if a job is assigned to a workflow handler and then that handler is shut down, the, those jobs are orphaned and never scheduled. Um, there, are, there are some other issues floating around. I need to go back through my notes. But... So I think, I'll, well, Marius, did you want to? No, no, go ahead. Oh. <laughs> I was going to say, I think a lot of this will come naturally with the de decomposition of uh, validatable tasks, right? So when we have celery tasks to do sort of these longer, these not within the span of a transaction components of work, uh, that's going to change a lot of this. Uh, and, and that's on this roadmap here. Yes. Okay, perfect. But the horizontal scaling, like the awesome lace like conditions, but in a general sense, horizontal scaling works. Um, like, yes, there are some, like, I guess, windows in which if the handler dies within this window, it's bad because Galaxy doesn't cover it, but. For... Well, you also can't shut it down completely until it has no more jobs that it's handling. Like a, a handler is responsible for a set of jobs and uh, no other handler can be, can take those over. I assume is what Nolan's talking about. Um, yeah, then, I mean, these are actually, relatively minor improvements right. that we can do. I don't think they uh, necessarily have to be on the roadmap. Yeah. Um, I, was I think that's, I mean, that is a known, we, we have an issue for that somewhere, but um, and it, it, it's something I think that uh, we've been moving towards, especially with uh, developments with the message messaging and all that kind of stuff, yeah. so. I mean, that there, there are two things, so, you know, we can address the urgent need uh, there. And the longer term thing is building up uh, message queue capabilities um, that will be more robust and uh, maybe pushing some of the job handling uh, also towards mes message queue, which they are made for doing um, for doing that. So yeah, uh, but that's not really Q1. Um, we want to start with a smaller project for the message queue and then 
extend that. Nolan, are you in any of the working groups? You want to join? <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know if I have the time. I, I basically invest as much as I can based on the projects I'm working on, but I don't actually have funding to work on Galaxy directly. Thank you for all the feedback regardless. Yeah. I, we don't say that enough. Yeah. I'm getting close to 100 open uh, issues now. I think I'm at 89 right now. <laughs> okay. Is that the, you is get that a t-shirt at 100. Old? So do we just need a Nolan uh, priority there, those issues? Or a working group. <laughs> yes. OK, uh, so Anvil, I believe, is going to be called uh, Human Genetics Working Group. Yeah, if you uh, escape and then present again, there will be an opportunity. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, uh, yes, the main purpose of this working group is to I guess, consolidate all the work from other pieces and especially the Galaxy and Kubernetes deployment and specifically purpose it for Anvil on GKE and uh, all of the integration points with Terra and Gently and other Anvil components. Um, so the uh, kind of like goals that I've written here are not set in stone. We're meeting tomorrow with the Bloat team. So I guess a little bit of background, the Anvil project is collaborative with the Bloat uh, institute in Boston, who is the institute that develops Terra, and then also a lot of other teams. Um, but the deployment of Galaxy is handled by Leonardo, which is a service that uh, the Bloat has as part of the stack. Um, so a lot of our work here also depends on them and coordinating with them. So I put a bunch of goals, if you go to the next slide, uh, I put a bunch of goals that are more like independent than the bloat that we can mostly do on our own and that also touch up on some things that the other groups have talked about. Um, but we're also meeting tomorrow with the bloat to talk about all the things that we need to do in terms of the actual deployment in Leo. Um, so high level priority is kind of the, from the tools perspective, uh, the idea is to have a transparent list of what tools come to the Ample by default uh, in the Anvil scenario, everybody's an admin on their own instance. So everybody can install tools from the tool shed and we can't, we're not taking on the guarantee that all the tools in the tool shed will always work in all versions, but we do want kind of a guarantee that the tools that come by default in the panel are working. Uh, so in order to do that, we're gonna start from a list of working tools and then maintain a testing infrastructure so that the list is continuously tested and then document how we add things to those tools. So whether we want to add it or we want, if a researcher wants to request a tool to be added, how to go through that process. Um, in terms of integration, this is the Anvil FS plugin, which uses the PyFile system to plugin. Um, and that's working for ingesting data from Terra, um, but we still need to do it the other way to push data back to the Terra buckets. Um, and then there's other integrations like the Docsler workflow, um, which are working, but might need some optimization. Um, but I'm not sure if that's going to be Q1 or not. Um, and then in terms of interactive tools, and that's kind of, we're going to, with the deployment group, kind of get interactive tools working on Kubernetes more generally. And then for the Anvil specifically, since it's on GKE, and there's the identity that's propagated from um, a Terra and the fact that Leo creates the proxy so we don't have control over the endpoint, uh, it's going to be slightly different. Uh, so after we get it working in a generic Kubernetes sense, we're going to need to do a few more tweaks to be able to work with the proxy and all the integrations that and the identity from Terra. Um, and in terms of deployment, um, we need to continue maintaining the Helm chart that aggregates the Galaxy Helm chart along with the dependencies. And as the releases come up, um, like um, update the chart to have the new Galaxy. Uh, so for 2001, uh, 2101 coming soon, we're gonna have to update the chart to work with that. Um, and then uh, on top of the testing ecosystem for tools, we also wanted to continuously know that 
Anvil, uh, the Galaxy is still deployable on Anvil. So uh, we haven't talked about like how often we would do this, but I'm thinking maybe like once daily, make sure an instance can still be deployed. It can still run jobs and basically have a status knowing that if somebody's going to Anvil today, that it's working and not have to get a message from someone that nothing's working before we deal with it. Um, and then in terms of launching, so like we've optimized Galaxy startup a lot and um, there's like a lot on the backend group, I guess, uh, that did all the caching. Um, and so Galaxy starts up in 30 seconds, but before that there's like the about minute and a half, two minutes of um, all the other, like the NFS, CVMFS, all of that coming up. But even before that, there's seven minutes of the cluster coming up. And that seven minutes is something that is almost entirely on the bloat side, but we do have ideas on how to optimize it. So we need to work with them to make Galaxy come up faster. And hopefully the baseline would be probably five minutes with everything. Um, and then that's more on the technical side. And then for the more science side of the group, just in general developing more workflows to actually use the huge amount of data that the Anvil makes available. Questions, comments? Thank you, that's very detailed. Is IT on Kubernetes in Anvil like a quarter one goal specifically or? Uh, ideally, yeah. So I'm hoping we do it since it's a Q1 goal for the deployment working group that like say halfway through the quarter, we can get it working on Kubernetes in general. And then the last step would just be like a little bit of ingress configuration and stuff for the Anvil. So hopefully it should be doable, yeah. Any other questions? On yeah, well, I guess I, the ITs have made their appearance at least three times, I think, in these slides. Um, but I don't think I actually uh, noticed them on the UI UX team. And currently, the UX absolutely sucks um, with ITs um, for especially a newcomer. Yeah. So hey, there are open issues, but the point of us picking roadmap priorities was to pick a few particular things, right? It's not to say that other stuff won't happen. Yeah. Um, well, there is an issue for it. In, in I think it is probably true, though, that if one of if the goals of a number of the other teams are let's have these ITs in production, we are going to have to get some of those U, UX issues yep. sorted out. So, well, uh, I think well, so I think at least part of it, the the display was hopefully uh, comes along with the the so the new history will. We'll have a componentized view of the data set and we can have a little bit more flexibility in how we show the items in the history and things like that and that'll resolve that particular part of it but yeah there's there is a master issue that shows uh, i can link it up let me find it I'll well go. it's so uh, i think you know once we have these priorities nailed down we need to <laughs> it literally should be like a graph representation of all the working groups with their priorities so we'll see how they should interact and that's yeah we need interface for it's i mean i icon should work at the minimum that's the one that was linked to the to the new history i think okay i think we're already way past the hour but we started late so uh support uh, Again, okay. are, are there any more questions on this? So just, okay. I'll make this quick. Uh, the support group is new because it used to be just one person. So we are working on identifying people from different groups and um, the support sort of touches everything else. We kind of have to know what's going on with everything else in order to address how users uh, when they have questions. So for end, end user advocates, um, provide scientific usage training support um, at various forums and chats and mailing rooms. Um, and an, an important part of this is triaging those problems. So if people report something, is it a usage problem? Can we improve some documentation? Is it a 
paper cut so we can improve the UX? Uh, is it something that just needs more documentation? Is it something that needs to pull other resources together into a story so people can understand it? And normally right now that happens um, in Q and A. Instead, we want to flip that so that those those resources are grouped together um, in what we have right now as FAQs, and in, instead access that resource and then help the user connect what their experience is with existing resources because sometimes they have trouble making that um, connection. So right now it's uh, me, Christo, uh, Dave C from Outreach is involved and he will cover more about what some of the immediate stuff is about. And then Ignacio uh, was nominated uh, late last night, early this morning. <laughs> so, um, and then we have a getter chat. Uh, people are welcome to join that. That is not public uh, because we do not want people to be asking questions there. So uh, it's not a Q&A place. It's to discuss how to give support. Um, and so our priorities are onboarding, finding out who's going to be involved. Um, we have been having regular meetings with been just a few people. We're going to uh, do a uh, larger ones, and that will include some GTN people and uh, uh, the, the video stuff, that kind of thing. Um, there's, there's, there's sort of like a bigger overview inside the chat right now. People want to kind of get an idea of what this involves. I think that's too detailed for this particular meeting. There will be more in Drive soon. We're working that out. Um, part of this is uh, the priority three is that we need to decide where we have these existing FAQs, right? Which are not probably in the right home. They're not consumable uh, as assets that we could say link into the interface, right? A little snippet of how things work and, and, and then links to other resources. Um, so we need to decide how we're gonna do that and where we're going to do that. And uh, so that's gonna involve some work with the core development team to make sure these things are consumable. And I know John had mentioned that that was something he was interested in, but the way that the way that these are now are too centric about uh, usegalaxy.org. Um, they are not automatically linked to anything. They are maintained personally. I'm probably the only person who understands the content of all of it. <laughs> so I'm the only one using it. Um, and so all of that kind of needs to be redesigned a little bit and then reorganized, standardized formats, um, a way to update it and a way to integrate these into other things. And, and how much of that could be, can start to be migrated needs to be decided. And it's gonna decide, and we need to get the first three done first. And then we can think about where the rest. Now, I know that um, when Dave talks, he's gonna talk about how we wanna turn some FAQs into tutorials in the GTN, which is great for some set. So that may be the first thing that we do um, as, as a translation. But we also need to, there's, people have questions. I wanna know how to do analysis X, right? And this, this can link to multiple resources to help them do something, or I have problem X, there's multiple resources. And, and so those need to be summarized together and then also broken out into smaller bits wherever they wherever they should live and they should be uh, version controlled they should be linked to do uh, releases for new features we need to make sure we cover those in a timely way um, and i think i'm going to stop there so if you're interested in what the bigger picture is right now you can go look at the chat and um like i said this is all like brand new. We've been just having, and we have to remember, people who are working on support every day are dealing with users as 90% of what they're doing right now. But that won't get easier until we start to make some of these the other things better, especially now that it's more than one person doing it. So um, we want to migrate resources into something that is expandable and forward thinking in a smart way and do it once. Um, so right now they're going to look. Uh, we probably want a representative from Australia on that group too. Yes, we do. And so, uh, Simon, uh, if you 
we can't see the speaker notes, but the speaker notes uh, say, yes, Simon has been paying to we're working on getting, finding out who it, that would be. So yeah, that, that's part of it. Questions? Well, just, I guess, for the future, when ITCR and Anvil start getting more activity, we're probably also going to need support for users there. Um, I agree. So, yes. So, I, I, I think that the scope of what these support assets are should increase as well. So, it's not just... And that, that that's where the update is. And we can discuss how to branch that out. And there's going to be some kind of ontology to help things get organized and um, and then a relational um, aspect so that things are just, it's not, not, not a linear branch, right? There's a lot of cross connections to different assets. And the, the ultimate goal is to be able to provide some of this directly inside of Galaxy itself, small blurb, little question mark. Um, it needs to, I think that having another website is not such a good idea. Um, maybe we have a uh, repository under Galaxy called Support Materials, and then those get published out to the Galaxy Help Forum, but they can also be consumed directly in the application. And so how that gets organized and okay. formatted, um, like everyone's feedback about. So. Yeah, it's probably not gonna happen in Q1, but yes, ultimately Anvil and ATCR will. Okay, any questions? All right, thank you, Jen. And uh, so many do we have? Okay, so we have training. Oh, sorry, we have, okay, we have testing and hardening. Uh, testing and hardening, um, those are the people. There's our Gitter channel. Uh, we decided on first Monday of the month, we're gonna have meetings. I forget the time, probably like noon Eastern. Uh, we're gonna, on the second Monday of each month, we're gonna do like a testing hackathon, code fest. We're gonna start by focusing on like transiently failing tests. So I've started sort of tracking those in the GitHub and in, in for, for Galaxy. Um, and just a place to start and get people hacking on things and reduce the signal to noise ratio, just make the test more useful. So probably something that will be documentation also. Um, and then uh, along with this like sort of focus on tests, we've, uh, we're gonna sort of stick with the release uh, testing that we did in 2009 or that Sergey sort of led up, Sergey Marius did, and sort of broaden the scope and cover more usability testing in, in 2101. Um, and so uh, Sergey is putting together some ideas um, related to uh, like a, a, a rotation of people to sort of um, sort of help out with release testing. So maybe like everyone could help out once a year and we could have four teams of people. And then the teams can also have specific, uh, you know, uh, deep dives they do for, for a release. So like maybe the admin team once a year, the admin team can just walk through the admin UI and, and make sure everything there is really solid with that release. Uh, do you want to go to the next slide? And so our quarter one priorities, um, something that came up this last release, we wanted to do performance testing. We didn't quite get there. Uh, we had some issues around this. And so uh, we roped Alex M into sort of helping us um, set up some infrastructure. Um, so we've broken it into like three big parts and we'll get, and hopefully in quarter one, we'll get the pieces set up. And then in quarter two, we'll start sort of integrating them at scale. But the pieces include being able to launch Jetstream instances to preview Galaxy from a, from, a, from a Galaxy PR and sort of test and play with the release. Um, we're gonna get some performance tests in um, things that, that, that you know, use Galaxy's metric collection and, and, and run some big jobs. Um, and then we'll sort of uh, write the pieces to connect those things and, and run those jobs. Um, and so that's sort of getting that that performance testing infrastructure in place is the, a big quarter one goal. Uh, the uh, other big thing we have on the plate is sort of Selenium and publishing and, and production instances. So Oleg is sort of spearheading this work around um, getting screenshots uh, generated for training materials, running our integration tests against production instances, annotating the tests better so you know what tests can run where and what they require. Um, and hopefully these will be like tools that we can give production instances um, uh, yeah, and that's the sort of, hopefully these are like very specific uh, small quarter one goals that we can uh, get done. They seem fairly reasonable. Um, any questions about any of that? Okay.
Awesome. So uh, I'm going to talk for the Outreach and Training Group, uh, which includes all these wonderful people listed on the right. Uh, so we have decided to try to begin with uh, to talk on Discord instead of Gitter, uh, that for a couple of reasons. Uh, one of these is you don't need to have a Git account, a Git account uh, to connect to Discord. Uh, we can have an unlimited message history for free, uh, which allows to find uh, some document that has been leaked before. Uh, we are trying to install some roles as well, so we can ping people related to one project without pinging the whole group um, from time to time. And one of the big advantage is also that we have a voice channel where we can pop in a meeting without sending an uh, invitation and everyone's connected can join the meeting at any time. Um, talking about meeting, we're going to try to meet once a month. So we're going to have two meeting, um, uh, one day per month, one at uh, I think 8 or 9 a.m. Uh, Eastern time and one at 5 p.m. Eastern time so we can have uh, everyone in Australia and Europe as well. Uh, we will record the meeting um, so people who can't attend uh, can see what's happening. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so uh, part of the priority we have uh, in the next three months for Q1 is uh, transfer some train some of the FAQ into uh, training material. Uh, like, what do we do if you have a red set or this kind of, of, of uh, style? Uh, since Jen can't possibly do that all alone, uh, we're going to try to do that during either CoFest or some extra hackathon uh, to transfer all of this. Uh, we have Nick working on a, a community website package uh, to replace the hub uh, that can be modular and deployed for uh, different use galaxy dot, uh, star. Uh, so the goal is to have it deployed in Q2, but having some at least uh, something to show up for Q1. Uh, I think Sergey is working on the deploying uh, TIS on uh, all the use galaxy servers. Uh, so we have some training videos that are out on the YouTube channel uh, for Q1. The goal is to have them uh, linked in the uh, GTN website. And uh, also uh, start talking about the automatic screenshot integration in GTN with, I think, Oleg is working on uh, that. Uh, for Q1, there's uh, Galaxy for Higher Education that has that is being tried uh, in a couple of universities in Europe. Uh, so maybe not for Q1, but they will apply for ACTS once they have some uh, first results with that. What is Galaxy for Higher Education and what is ECTS? ECTS are a European credit for uh, degrees. Okay. Uh, so they, uh, I don't have a lot of detail on that, but they have been starting to try some material uh, with some teacher, uh, see how it goes. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so for the three months, next three months, we're also going to start installing an extra call uh, for the CoFest. So we're going to now have three uh, call, one with EU, uh, with Berenice and Saskia, leading, leading the conversation in the US, uh, Jen and I, and in Australia, uh, Simon and Anna. Uh, so the GTN CoFest will be happening at the same time as Paper Cuts. Uh, I think right now we are on the timing of every three months, but we're thinking about moving to every uh, two months uh, for the CoFests. Uh, we also want to encourage the participation to uh, the Open Life Science Project, uh, which is organized uh, in part with Berenice, uh, which pairs uh, mentor and new project to help them uh, navigate through uh, open science um, uh, using Git, Git, GitHub and uh, open resources. Uh, so uh, Dave, Beatrice and I have been uh, mentor and participants uh, for OLS2 and we are thinking about encouraging more people of the community to join in that. Uh, the GTN paper has been uh, in the machine for a bit, uh, but we hope send it, uh, to be able to send it before uh, the end of January. Uh, there's a dev training happening uh, sometime in 2021, 
and uh, it will be discussed more at the uh, January round table. Um, and I think that's, oh no, uh, there's an extra slide. Uh, we also like uh, to organize some uh, hybrid meetings with working group because uh, as Jen was saying, uh, we have some topic that we need to discuss, notably with the uh, UIX group, like uh, linking the tutorial, the help and the videos uh, to, to the interface, for example. And also, uh, we have a lot of feedback from uh, users on how they uh, live the, the, the experience, uh, not, most notably for uh, storage management. Uh, we want to develop some training for uh, how to manage your space uh, efficiently. And uh, we're thinking about how to make it uh, more gamey for people to be interested in cleaning the space. Thank you. Okay, is that all right? So this is the last. So I think this is it. So just some before we wrap this up, just a few observations. Says I don't think all groups have Gitter channels. It doesn't have to be Gitter channel, but there has to be some channel where this communication is possible. And uh, we need to once they we're going to be preparing. Um, page on the hub which lists all working groups that should all be there because otherwise I don't know how you guys going to communicate. Um, and again, um, we so the PIs we're going to take the uh, whoever's typing please you. Uh, so the PIs we're going to look at these uh, goals that you have in these slides, but we're going to do this next Tuesday. So if you guys can look at them again before next Tuesday and A, again, check if they're reasonable for Q1 and that they're um, uh, sort of a spec, that they're spec out nicely. Uh, and um, obviously we, we should avoid one person being head of three groups as Nate does. So you guys need to rethink that uh, in the first three groups. And, um, we need we need to have point people for each group, so we have that, and we also need to create some communication channel with them, so we can communicate directly with uh, with these representatives. Any other notes, Anton? We have a few new users since the beginning. Can you go to slide two, maybe? One second, and just maybe sum up what these working groups are for the new people okay just a second i lost my which slide slide two you need to refresh probably ah yeah Do you see that, Bjorn? Yep. Okay. Bjorn, oh. would you like to talk through this slide? <laughs> okay. Um, or so I can. It's up to you. I wrote yeah, this. Please, and... please do it, Nate. Please. Uh, please what? do it, Jeremy. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Better. Nate's way more savvy than I am, um, but I'll do my best. So, as a, PI, as, as a set of PIs, we talked about working groups over the course of a couple of weeks and decided it was important to try to create some structure because the Galaxy community has grown so big so quickly and it's become incredibly diverse as well. And so in order to put some structure around that and in particular to hopefully make everybody who's actually doing the work and has hands-on day-to-day happier, more productive, uh, more autonomous and provide opportunities for growth. These working groups are meant to ideally improve not only the function of the entire team, but also your happiness as individual developers, admins, trainers, and so on. So certainly please let us know if that's not the case, but that really is the goal here. It's to give you um, as part of a working group, someone to talk to, to bounce ideas off of in a small group setting. So you don't feel like you're all alone. Um, and it's to provide the opportunity to build something that you couldn't do on your own by gathering folks who are like-minded. So by having these groups, which to be fair, existed informally 
throughout years. Now we've kind of formalized those. Um, so there have always been groups that have been interested in deployment or the back end. Now it's just a little more formal. And so for work group organization, we've created these work groups around big topics. Um, for now, we think these are good working groups. If there are others that we missed, and I know we talked about some of those today, um, we can certainly revisit that and try to manage them. What we want is to try to come up with a sweet spot where we have enough working groups to cover all the major work, work points or, or work topics, but don't get to the point where we're stressing people um, by having to participate in too many work groups. And so we don't wanna create a work group unless we can really have folks that are going to dedicate themselves to being able to contribute and pushing the work group forward. It is absolutely okay to say that we can't get work done in a certain quarter or that this, this work is important, but it's got to go into a priority queue at some point. And so perhaps instead of creating a working group, we take some of this important work that has fallen out and move it into another group and list it as a priority that we will get to. And certainly concretely, the goals here, as I kind of articulated at a high level are to promote communication and collaboration around joint projects to provide entry points for new members. I know there are a lot of new folks on these calls and we're getting new folks every day. These entry points I already saw, for instance, that someone asked about potentially contributing to the back end, and they were pointed to the Gitter back end channel. And that's fantastic. Um, and hopefully they'll find some traction there. So provide entry points into the community is an important thing that we're doing here. Improve the communication between the experts that we do have across our community. I wrote group, but it really is community. And then clear communication points as well across these groups, ideally, so that we can get some, some improved throughput. So rather than having everything quite so distributed, streamline it just a little bit so that we get important people talking to each other when we have these features, such as interactive tools that cross cut all these different places. Did I cover everything, Bjorn? Perfect, thanks. <laughs> mm -hmm. Any other concerns, please? Yep. I mean, if there are no concerns, that's fine too. But just if you think that, oh, I, I, they really don't get that, but I just don't want to say it. It's just... So, so uh, I had one, uh, I mean, something that you really stand on, which is uh, the scope of a working group. I felt that uh, there is this issue that some of the some of the tasks that each working group has taken on might be maybe too large for a quarter. Uh, and maybe it would make sense to have a, one like a reasonably, uh, you know, uh, reasonably large task that's accomplished or, or the working group strives to accomplish within, the, within a quarter, which, you know, that is their main task. Somehow they will achieve that task. And thus it keeps the ball moving forward uh, and then to address the concern that Nolan raised that there are some bugs and stuff that might be left behind. Maybe you could also include like one single overarching task, like a large task and a bunch of say 10 bugs or something or five bugs that the working group will try to fix within a quarter. Um, what, well, I guess what in part, we're trying to uh, solve the issue of small bugs via paper cuts, but uh, but there might be bugs specific to expertise of a particular group. Yes. Yeah, I don't know if we need a better way for <clears throat> so to should we have like a a leaderboard of things that people are concerned about before we do the whole uh, you know working group meeting and setting the priorities that way so. For, a, for an example, the UI UX working group would know, okay, everyone really wants you to focus on IT UI UX for, for this, this quarter. It's, it's a blocker before we sit down and make priorities or I, I don't know how to better organize that, I guess. I think there are two concerns we're trying to address here. Number one is whether we're too ambitious in our goals. And my suggestion is that we let the working groups decide and sketch out what they want to do in Q1. And if it, if it turns out that they're way too ambitious, then they're going to scale back. So this is part of the autonomy and um, trust in your teammates is let's, 
let's trust that everybody can scope something out and if not, they'll adjust. The second question of how we prioritize work is a really interesting one. And to be clear, it's one that the PIs continue to discuss. And it's brought up some really nice points about how we can try to incorporate user feedback into this loop. And I don't think we have the answers at all right now. Um, suggestions about how to gather feedback from the entire community, which is worldwide at this point, and, and prioritize that work in addition to the work that we've agreed upon for our grants is kind of what we're balancing right now to be really clear about from the PI level. That's what we think about is we want to serve the community. We have some deliverables as part of our grants and we, and how do we merge those two together? On the topic of scope uh, for a quarter, I, I think that suggestion of having, um, you know, roughly 60% of your effort sort of uh, uh, assigned to these working groups. If you break that down, if you're a member of two working groups, that means one and a half days uh, uh, per week, roughly uh, contributing to the work for the working group. So if you, you know, multiply that out, roughly 12 weeks and a quarter means 12 days, uh, maybe 15 days of work. Uh, so what can you accomplish in 15 days uh, of dedicated full-time work is what basically uh, may help inform what gets put on the individual tasks for a given quarter for a given working group. This might be a dumb question, but does the Galaxy Project have a project manager? Not really. Huh. Because uh, one of the things that I always had the impression of is that there were like these larger internal meetings that were deciding direction and kind of just normal, like traditional project management stuff. And I always wanted to like have a peek at the Gantt charts and whatnot. It's, it's not a traditional project in many ways. And it's, yeah. been, and it's been operating that way for what, 12 years already. So we, we sort of never felt the need. Uh, because it was, it used to be fairly horizontal in the way it worked. And so this is probably the first time that we feel that need. And this is why we're trying, but we still don't want to, you know, one of the, Jeremy mentioned that word autonomy. So we, the goal of working groups is sort of to make these decisions as, as they're seen by developers. We don't want to impose a lot of these things. Yes, of course, we have a set of priorities. We have a goals for the grants but we don't want to make this traditional top heavy um, sort of a, a paradigm. I was thinking more uh, take them taking on a role where they facilitate the project planning and management for each of the working groups uh, rather than dictate, just to take the burden off the developers because I'm sure they have their own tasks that they- yeah, Absolutely. Uh, this is what sort of PIs historically have done. So I think, I guess program managers here are the PIs and that's, that's how it's been. I don't know if it's good or bad. I'm just telling you how it is. Okay. Uh, it's been one and a half hours. I mean, more than one and a half hours. So you... I, I have one thing very briefly. Yes, um, I just, I just like to volunteer something here. Uh, I, I, I've been doing a little experiment with Alex uh, uh, with some of the tasks that he's been assigned to Vue, which is the front end framework that we're using. Um, I'd like to just volunteer to mentor anybody who's trying out front end tech for the first time and isn't sure exactly what to do. I am more than happy, just ping me. I will, I will help you do your PR. You know what I mean? Like, uh, and, and I, I, I don't know that this is done frequently in Galaxy, but this is done frequently in software development everywhere else. Um, I, get, I, I am looking at a lot of our work product and wishing that I had done this sooner. You know, I am wishing that I had teamed up with people when they tried to make their first PR in the front end arena. Um, there are definitely some basic concepts I think that have been missed and we're discussing that in the UI UX channel too a little bit, but I am more than happy to help anybody who is struggling to make their PR in a technology that they are unfamiliar with. Um, <clears throat> to, to add on to that, I think it would be awesome if, uh, you know, if you feel you have expertise 
that you can review um, pull requests. You may not have a binding vote, but it would certainly be appreciated. Well, I was going to say, to add to that as well, now that we have more formalized working groups, we can... <sighs> We, we can have, you know, okay, the UI UX team has to look at this or the backend team needs to look at this and not just can look at it, but can also be a resource when you, when you want to implement something, you know who to talk to and, and where to get help. And I think that's a, it's a good move in the right direction. And I'm always up for mentoring people with uh, tool wrapping as I've done before. I would just much rather spend some more time up front than like, for instance, I'm having to, to, to fix some things now, which is natural when you get people working on tech for the first time. Uh, if we could reduce that churn, that would be great. And if it means pinging me and bothering me and having me show you how to do something, do it. Please just, just bang on my door. Any other ideas? how we can improve all of this. I just like to say that this is the first time that you're doing this, right? So we can't expect that everybody's scope is gonna be perfect. Like it's kind of human nature or at least work culture to be overly ambitious. So um, it'll even out and it's like an iterative process. We gotta let it coast. Okay. All right. So uh, um, again, um, take a look at your priorities. See if you can um, either scale them down or expand them a little bit more and then we will review them and then we'll go through another iteration of that. And eventually we're gonna have a solid set of goals for the next quarter. What, when is that? Uh, like when is the, how long do we have to, to refine these before you're going to Until Tuesday. Them? Okay, thanks. Yes, this is the next PI meeting is on Tuesday. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for preparing for this. Uh, and uh, we'll definitely be in touch soon. All right, uh, John, please uh, send us a link once the recording, once you receive the recording, since you're the host. Will do. All right. Hi, everyone. I will save the Bye, everyone. Thank you.